So, uh, in this tutorial we're going to be going through the mole and what the mole is and uh, trying to explain um, what we mean by the mole. So, first of all, first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a quick recap of atomic structure because this is very important for understanding the mole. So, in an atom you have got um, a central part here which is called the nucleus which contains protons and neutrons as you can see there and around the outside you've got the electrons. Now remember that protons and neutrons are quite big and so they have a relative mass of one each. Uh, electrons are very tiny and so they have a relative mass. So relative oops, mass of zero in comparison to protons and neutrons. And that's quite important for this. Now, so this here, for example, would have one, two, three protons, four, five, six with the neutrons. So in there, there's a total mass, as it were, of six things. So before we can start approaching the mole and what the mole means, we need to clarify some, um, some very specific uh, definitions of certain things. So for example, over here we've got the relative isotopic mass, we've got the relative atomic mass, and the relative molecular mass. So we're going to have a look at what the differences are between these things. So with an isotope then, so isotopes are obviously, um, an isotope is um, a form of an element which has the same number of um, protons but different numbers of neutrons. Different numbers of neutrons. So for example here we're going to look at chlorine and uh, these are the two isotopes of chlorine. You've got chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. So chlorine 35 then has got 35 things in its nucleus, protons and neutrons. Chlorine 37 has got um, 37 things in its nucleus. Um, now these are uh, both found in nature, but they're found in different abundances. So um, chlorine 35, for example, makes up 75% of all chlorine in nature. And chlorine 37 is only found in, 25% uh, of chlorine is found in that form. So um, this is where the second term comes important here, the relative atomic mass. Now this is the average mass of the isotopes, of isotopes of something. So for example, for chlorine now then, um, this would be the average mass of these two things. And if we were to average these out, you find that chlorine has um, an average mass then, of it, you know, an average mass of its isotopes of 35.5, and that's why in the periodic table, when you look at chlorine, it says 35.5. It doesn't mean there's half a proton or half a neutron in there. It's just that this is the average of the relative isotopic masses of chlorine. So that's just something we need to bear in mind there. Now, when it comes to relative molecular mass, um, this is what tells us the mass of a molecule. So for example, you know, chlorine over here, we've only got one atom of it, but uh, chlorine is diatomic, and so it's found in pairs, as you can see here, Cl2. Um, that means that we have got two chlorine atoms stuck together. Now, obviously, um, the total mass of this then is going to be the comb is going to be the the these um, relative atomic masses combined. So the relative molecular mass then of chlorine gas is going to be 71 because that's that's the combination of these two it's those added up the final term that we have to um, become familiar with is this the molar mass now this is what links these three things together and links us to the topic of moles so the molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance the mass of one mole of a substance now obviously at the moment we don't really know what we mean by a mole so we're going to look at that in a little bit more depth now the mass of one mole of a substance. So we're going to look at a slightly different example to L, to atoms, just a, uh, just in a as a method of understanding moles a little bit easier. So let's have a look at this then. So here then we're actually looking at the mole. Okay, so the mole refers to the amount of some substance that you have, how much of something you have. So the mole is basically just a number. Okay, it's basically just a number. Now, one of the problems with the mole, and this is probably where most students um, slip up, and it's where I slipped up when I was doing a level chemistry, is you try you think that the mole directly refers to the mass of something, or that it refers directly to the concentration of something. But it's not. It's slightly different. The mole is just the number of something that you have. So for example, here I've got one elephant. 
And on the right, I've got one mouse. Now, these two things have different masses. So the elephant is heavier than the mouse. We've still only got one of them though. Okay, and that's the important thing. It's how many of something you have. So here we have one elephant, one mouse. They have different masses, but there is the same number of moles of them. So let's have a look at this then. So here we've got four elephants and we've got four mice. So again, uh, we, ha we have exactly the same number of these different things. We've got four elephants, four mice, but their masses are going to be different. Not because, not necessarily because of the, 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 the moles, but because of the size of the actual things. Okay, so let's refer that to something that, uh, in terms of moles now then. So a mole is um, a number, as I said, and this is the number here, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And this is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. Now this is a huge number, it's inconceivably big. Okay, obviously here I've not actually drawn how many of these I've got, but it's just to try and represent this. So um, this is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. That, that means that means 6 um, with 6.02 with, with 23 zeros after it. That is a huge, huge, huge number because that's the sort of scale we're looking at with atoms and elements. It is absolutely vast. Um, so, but remember, a mole is just this many of something. Okay, so one mole of something contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of them. So one mole of elephants means we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 elephants. And one mole of mice means we've got 6.02 times 10 to the 23 mice. Now, yes, they do have different masses, but the important thing here is to remember that a mole is how many of something there are. That is why it relates to mass. That's why it relates to concentration. But that's a key thing that you have to understand and, and get in your heads now, that a mole is just a number. A mole is just a number. That's so important to understand. Just a number. So this is two actual elements. So um, here we've got a mole of four. We've got a mole of like a mole of hydrogen. A lens is a very big atom. It's huge size. How many elements? And hydrogen is very small. How many mice? So a mole of lead contains six point zero two times ten to the twenty-three of those um, atoms. Six point zero two times ten to the twenty-three of them. times 10 to the 23 of those. So that's a huge number of these things. Um, but remember, it's just uh, the mole tells you how many of them there are. And that's really important again to, to remember. So let's um, bring us back in and relate to what we were doing about a little bit earlier on. Um, so we've got relative isotopic mass, atomic mass, and molecular mass here. So let's link this to the molar mass. The, like we said, the molar mass is the mass of one mole of substance. So it's the weight of one mole of substance. So if, for example, I had one mole of chlorine 35 over here on the left, then that would weigh 35 grams per mole because that's, that's the units that we use for molar mass. Okay, so that's the units we use for molar mass, grams per mole. So that means that one mole of the, of this weighs 35 grams. Okay, so 35 grams per mole. If you're looking at chlorine 37 then, so if we just had that isotope, then one mole of chlorine 37 would weigh, would, would have a molar mass of 37 grams per mole. It would weigh 37 grams. Um, again, chlorine. So if we had one mole of chlorine, then that would weigh 35, that would have a molar mass of 35.5 grams per mole. And if we had chlorine gas, you would have um, uh, the total of that, so so chlorine gas has a, a molar mass of 71 grams per mole. So let's have a look at, molar, uh, at um, chlorine gas in a little bit more depth then. So again, chlorine gas here, like we've got our, our atomic masses there, so it would come together and make a, a, um, a molecular mass of 71. Okay. Um, now, so it's got a molar mass of 71 grams per mole. So that means that one mole of it would weigh 71 grams. So let's have a look at this then. So this means that one mole of chlorine gas would weigh 71 grams. One mole of it does. Uh, now, that means then that if you had half of a mole, so 0.5 moles, then that would weigh half the amount. So half a mole, half a mole weighs 35.5 grams. 
So 0.5 moles of chlorine weighs that much. And again, in the same principle, if you had um, two moles of it, then um, it would weigh double. So it would be 142 grams. So two moles of chlorine gas weighs 142 grams. So that's the basics of the mole, really. You just need to remember that the mole is a number, and one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of substance, or out of something. And that's the key thing to remember here. And remember that that number, that number is called Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. And that's more or less it in terms of the mole. I hope that helped. So one final example that I uh, very nearly forgot to go through. Um, so let's just have a look at an example here. So one mole of this then, so we've got sodium sulfate here then. Let's have a look at what that contains. So one mole of sodium sulfate then contains 6.02 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of those molecules. So in one mole of sodium sulfate, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Now, let's have a look inside the molecule then. So what this tells me here is that there are in one mole of sodium sulfate there are two moles two moles of sodium because it's all a ratio thing going on here. Um, and I've got one mole of sulfur one mole of sulfur and you can probably see where I'm going with this now. With oxygen then, we have got four moles of oxygen within one mole of sodium sulfate. So we're looking within this here. So let's have a look then at how many of each of those atoms we've got then, because we, we, we've got some good information we can use here. So let's have a look at sodium then. Sodium. So in this then, let's have a look at how many, how many sodium atoms we've got in one mole of sodium sulfate. So if we've got one mole of sodium sulfate is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, then two, and we've got two moles of sodium in that, then that means that we've got two times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of those molecules. Sorry, of those atoms in, um, in the molecule, which equals 1.02 times 10 to the 24. So there are this many so, um, atoms there's that many atoms of sodium in one mole of sodium sulfate. And let's very quickly have a look at the other two. So we're looking at how many sulfur atoms and how many oxygen atoms we've got in one mole of sodium sulfate then. So this is how many of each atom we've got then. 1 times 6.02 times 7.73 for the sulfur, because we've got one mole of it in one mole of this. We've got four moles of oxygen in one mole of sodium sulfate, so we're going to multiply that out, and this is what we get. And this is how many atoms of each of the things we've got in there. So you can actually work out exactly how many atoms are in one mole of something. And remember, you can work out um, how much that will weigh as well, because the molecular mass of sodium sulfate is 142, because if we add up all of the atom relative atomic masses within that, so that's the MR. Now remember, that's the MR, then that means that the molar mass of sodium sulfate is going to be 142 grams per mole, which means that one mole then of sodium sulfate must weigh 142 grams. Ta-da! Okay, so I really hope that's helped. If not, go back through it. Um, it is a difficult subject. Please re re repeat this, this video if you need to, uh, but I hope that helped.